The following program contains strong sexual content. Viewer discretion advised. Warning, today's show is going to take a deep dive into what I consider the most heinous, despicable, and evil thing ever perpetrated by a parent. I was my dad's sex slave. You said that you would wake up to your father on top of you. When I was six, he started kissing me. I was seven years old. He started sexually abusing me. My father fed me drugs. He put a bag over my head and suffocated me. As unimaginable as this story is, you haven't heard the worst of it yet. Meet Tatiana. Now, Tatiana left Brazil and moved to America at just six years old to live with her parents. Almost immediately, her father began forcing her to do drugs so he could sexually abuse her and beat her feet black and blue with a bat. At 12 years old, Tatiana's father pulled her out of school and sexually assaulted her every single day. He installed security cameras and motion sensors around their home, making it impossible for her to escape. She says she was terrorized by her father, who regularly threatened to kill her if she ever told anyone about the abuse. But then at 25, after 19 years of torture, she was finally rescued. Take a look. Right now, I'm broken, confused, and I don't know if I can live a normal life. I was sexually, physically, emotionally abused by my biological father, Gandolfo Tibes. I was abused for 19 years. I was my dad's sex slave. Anything he wanted, I had to do. A lot of these pictures, I'm smiling, but I'm dying inside. From when I was six, he started kissing me down there and touching me down there. He would tell me not to tell, and he would ask me if it felt good. My father was a karate instructor. He would sexually abuse me in the studio. My mom was not there. She was a nanny. She did odd jobs, cleaning houses. When my mom was off to work, that's when he would come and prey on me. My dad made me lure men to the house to have sex with me so he could watch. When I was about 15 years old, it became routine. But the times that I would not bring men back, he would beat me up and say that I was lying, that I didn't try. Not only was he sexually abusing me, he was physically abusing me, hitting me with baseball bats, anything he could grab, even extension cords. He would grab my feet and just smack it like that. Bam, my knees were bruised and I was bedridden for days. I couldn't walk at all. Out of nowhere, I would wake up just blows to the head, to the body. He was paranoid. My father was on drugs the majority of the time that he abused me. My father fed me drugs from six years old. He introduced me to alcohol, marijuana at the age of eight, cocaine at 10. I was a prisoner and he watched me 24-7. The abuse got worse when he pulled me out of school and I wasn't even really allowed outside the house. My dad installed surveillance cameras inside the house. He had alarms as well and dogs. We had about seven Rottweilers at one point. He had sensors under the bed so I wouldn't be able to leave at all at night. I couldn't even go to the bathroom at night. I had to use the bucket next to the bed. I had to wake him up and tell him I had to go use the restroom, but that was rare because I did not want to wake him up because it's like waking up the beast. On a day-to-day -day basis, I would have to cook, clean, basically living like his wife. I never tried to escape. I wish I did. He threatened to kill me. Plenty of times I contemplated hurting him, but I was just so scared of the unknown and I just gave in. Well, Tatiana, I'm very, very glad you're here. And rest assured, I'm not gonna ask you any details that embarrass you here. And um, I just wanna say that, that while I'm glad to meet you, I'm just really sorry for the circumstance. M my question, in looking back on this, how do you think your father was able to keep this a secret from the world for so many years? I have no idea, he just was very personable. Um, he's very smart, 
he's read a lot of books. Um, this got to the point that he was performing like 10 sex acts a week. I mean, this was an intense assault pattern on you, correct? That is correct. And it, the earliest remembrances you have of this were at what age? Six years old, that one picture you, that right. I gave you guys, right. me holding the doll. And at six, you know, you, you say that he would, he would kiss you, he would, he would touch your privates, but it wasn't long after that that in addition to that being inappropriate, wrong, and humiliating, things began to get very painful, correct? That's because he began to violate your body in that way. Very correct. When was that and what, what happened then? I was seven years old, eight years old. He started sexually abusing me. And he started giving you drugs. What did you think about that? Did it scare you when you started getting fuzzy? Me. It scared me a lot when I started getting fuzzy, and I remember several occasions exactly not knowing what was going to happen afterwards. You said that you would wake up sometimes to your father on top of you, and I, you know, it's just something that makes it difficult for me to use that word father, mm -hmm. um, this man on top of you, just beating you. You're asleep, mm -hmm. you wake up, and he's just beating you. Was there any sense of why? No, I have no idea. Um, for whatever reasons, he came up with his own reasons as to why he was beating me up like that and waking me up like that, and it was all through his paranoia. Um, I just know that I, I had to sleep almost with one eye open, scared. You said he would take a baseball bat and mm -hmm. beat the bottoms of your feet. He would make me give my feet to him, and I would do as much as I could because I didn't want the swinging to go everywhere because there was times also that my knees were so bruised, my, um, my elbows, everything, because he was just swing. You say at age 10, he was a karate taekwondo instructor. You say he raped you in the, the studio, in the dressing room. Correct. So there were other people around, but he would take you there early before the class started? Correct. Now, you say at age 12 that he took you out of school. He didn't want me to get close and maybe open up to somebody. Looking back, do you feel guilty that you should have told someone? I do feel guilty, and I should have never continue to let him manipulate me and do what he was doing to me, but I was so scared and uncertain. That's all that I knew. You think about this now as an adult, you, you have to remember how old you were when this was going on. You can't judge what you did at eight, nine, or 10 with a 20-something brain. Mm -hmm. Because as a child, we just know what we know as a child. And people don't understand that at that age, a prison is more than motion detectors. A prison is more than locked doors. The psychological prison, the psychological barriers are much more powerful mm -hmm. than a locked door. And when a child is controlled by an adult with the fear of what will happen if you tell. Correct, yes. And, you know, people wonder, having gone through this, how you can discuss it so calmly. But you've learned to push this down and encapsulate it, haven't you? I sure have, sir. I live, I was able to manage living that horrible situation. So in my sense, I figure, you know, him out of the picture is, you know, um, I'm okay. And as unimaginable as this story is, you haven't heard the worst of it yet. We'll be right back. Did you 
pretend you were yeah. a family? What did you pretend do? Pretend I was a family trying to be nice, always be on his good side. Even having sex, I would just let him have his way, get it over with, and go on about my day. People gonna talk in DC. They're claiming the Samuels are looking to divorce. Him and his dad are not speaking. Wait, 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 wait. Welcome. We're gonna be out on our own little island for peace. I'm gonna go before I forget. The sisterhood just went out the window. I'm back. Then own them. And again and again and again. Love and Marriage DC returns Saturday, January 21st at 8, 7 Central. Let the chips fall where they may. Tension's gonna fly. Everybody's dating each other, but everybody knows they're dating each other. Their directness yeah. is getting out of hand. Yeah. When I saw that, I was like, oh, well. If you're looking for a man, say amen. Amen. There are some things that I've heard. It's so embarrassing. Hey, sweetheart. Next. I think he's a fraud, and I don't think he's a good person. It's only gonna get worse. I ain't gonna do this with everybody. This is so much. Ready to love. New episode, Friday, 8, 7 Central. This is Mary Ann's first time visiting Paris. Madame, où allez-vous? Uh... Before Marianne packed her bags, before she attempted her first sentence in French, before she completed her first 15 minute lesson, yes. she downloaded Babbel. Babbel helped unlock her lifelong dream of learning French. She started speaking in just three weeks. So when it came time to tell the cab driver to take her to the Hotel Pierre, J'aimerais aller à l'hôtel Pierre. Oh, c'est très bien. J'espère que votre voyage est bien passé. 150 language experts and educators designed Babbel to be the most efficient and effective way to learn a new language. Babbel focuses on natural conversation. You'll remember what you learn, and you can speak and pronounce with confidence. Start speaking a new language in three weeks. Try it for free at Babbel.com. Starting Friday. You gotta get with it or get lost. Ready to Love returns with new episodes, followed by the new series, All the Single Ladies. You ladies have decided? I am a prize. Friday at 8, 7 Central. Part of Real Drama Weekends on OWN. LeBron's on vacation. How about we throw the party here? We gonna invite all the celebrities. Have you seen how out of control this party is? He eating an apple in the party. That's the sign of a madman right there. House party. Rated R. She's immune. Robust. They're working on a cure. You get her there. And you said everything right. There's always something bad out there. Infected. Raiders. Clickers. After all we've been through, there's no halfway with this. We have a job to do. We finish what we started. <laughs> this picture. This when I was 12 years old. You can kind of tell that I'm intoxicated on this one. My eyes are real low. Eyes of somebody who smoked something. He was already abusing me without the heavy drugs. So he was just doing it because he could abuse me more. I would hate it when he would get the drugs, I tell you that much, because then it would be like so much longer that I would have to endure it. My father was a drug addict. The abuse would be more when he was on drugs. It would be a week or all night abuse. For nearly 19 years, Tatiana was held captive, forced to take drugs, brutally beaten, and sexually abused by her father. But there's more to it than that. As a result of my father sexually abusing me, I was pregnant a total of four times with one abortion. I have three children with my father. I was 16 years old when I became pregnant with my first daughter. I was 21 years old when I was pregnant with my second daughter. 24 years old with my third daughter. He used to mark down my period cycles and I was late. I was shocked and I was happy, but I was confused as well. When I gave birth to my first child, it was very scary. It was intense. They asked who the father was. I said I didn't know. The sexual abuse continued during the pregnancies. He raped me, but he would not beat me as much. I would still get beat. I would still get my hair pulled. I would still get smacked. One time when I was pregnant with my youngest daughter, I was about seven months pregnant, and he tied 
my hands behind a chair, put a bag over my head and just suffocated me. I felt like I died and I came back. My first daughter was born, she was like, you know, my little angel. I just wanted to protect her. She was just my little friend because I had nobody. So all I did was, you know, play with her. I was really happy, but yet I was really sad because I didn't know what was going to, you know, become of us. So you gave birth to three of your dad's, I can't say that word, you, you, mm -hmm. you gave birth to three that means. of this monster's children. Correct. Um, and you had one abortion. Mm -hmm. You're now 38. You have these children who are how old now? 21, 17, and 14. 21, 17, and 14. And you, you say that having a child gave you purpose. That's right. Gave you purpose to exist, survive, get through this. How did it change when you had a child? Changed my well-being as well, being in the house by myself, having nobody else to lean to, to, you know, talk to. It was... What would you do to cope? Would you try to make nice with him? Did you... Mm -hmm. Pretend you were yeah. a family. What did you Pretend do? Pretend I was a family trying to be nice always be on his good side I You know even as far as to having sex or whatnot, you know I knew that he was gonna do it anyway, so I wouldn't you know try to fight him off all the time I would just let him have his way so that way it would be easier and get it over with and go on about my day as perverse as this sounds and I, I, I have to ask this because I want to get everything on the mm -hmm. table because I, I want to help you. Were there times that you convinced yourself that you enjoyed this in any way? Were there times where you found pleasure in a given instance that you thought, well, that was okay? Mm. No, I would try to tell myself it was okay, but it never felt okay. That's what I mean. You tried to tell yourself, tell well, this was okay, mm -hmm. this is like husband and wife. Right. But deep down inside, I knew it wasn't okay. Just like my everyday life, I know that <clears throat> my past and my girls are not okay, but I have to live as if it's okay. Yeah. Who else was around when this was going on? Just my brother. And, he was more in the house. Yeah, and nobody and, knew and let me tell you this, sir, and even after my brother, two years after he left, he, he didn't come back. Do you so, think he knew what was going on? Mm hmm and he was scared as well. The obvious question in everybody's mind is where was your mother when all this was going on? We'll get that answer after the break. You had three children with him. Mm -hmm. They got to the age where he started abusing you. Correct. Did he hurt them? Coming January 21st. The Samuels are looking to, uh, the D word, divorce, separate, something did, like did that. Did they say divorce or separate? What? We just had a whole show prep with our producer, and no one told me he was going to bring us up live on the air today. She says that her and her husband are trying to fix their marriage and denying any divorce rumors. All marriages go through stuff. Does that mean we separate or get divorced? Absolutely not. Love and Marriage DC. New episodes, Saturday, January 21st at 8, 7 Central. Come on, open book. Okay, open book. The three-part reunion concludes. She is the definition of the devil. You have a dark soul. Oh. Damn, Tisha. Damn. You don't want to miss. Oh, you talking about when you hacked his phone? What the f***? All this. I'm very concerned about you. Love and Marriage Huntsville, new reunion part three, Saturday at 8, 7 Central. Introducing Anilon X, the only non-stick cookware engineer for flavor. Make it exquisite with our patented Seartex surface that holds oil in the center of the pan and caramelizes like cast iron. 
Make it delicious with our thick edged edge steel base that retains heat and sears evenly. Make it with cookware design to bring out every nuance and every flavor. Shop now and get free shipping at analonx.com. Over 100 million Americans have low or no credit. Self is a new way to build credit. No credit score required. Self customers who start under 600 and make on-time payments see a 49-point bump in their credit score on average. Download the app today. Let the chips fall where they may. Tension's gonna fly. Everybody's dating each other, but everybody knows they're dating each other. Your directness Come here. is getting out of hand. Yeah. When I saw that, I was like, oh, well. If you're looking for a man, say amen. Amen. There are some things that I've heard. It's so embarrassing. Okay, sweetheart. Next. I think he's a fraud, and I don't think he's a good person. It's only going to get worse. I ain't going to do this with everybody. This is too much. Ready to love. New episode, Friday, 8, 7 central. Starting Friday. You got to get with it or get lost. Ready to Love returns with new episodes, followed by the new series, All the Single Ladies. You ladies have decided? I am a prize. Friday at 8, 7 Central. Part of Real Drama Weekends on home. LeBron's on vacation. How about we throw the party here? We're going to invite all the celebrities. Have you seen how out of control this party is? He eating an apple in the party. That's a sign of a madman right there. House party. Ready to are. Do you want your man or not? Do you know your plans or not? You gonna go back home or not? You gonna claim your throne or not? Is you Khaleesi or that other <laughs> name I don't remember? This is our house from 14 to 25. This is where I live. If those walls could talk, they would say a lot. One day, my father just stabbed me so hard in my hand that it almost went all the way through, and I still have nerve damage on that hand to this day. He would tase me as well when I was around 14, 15. He did it like five times. He was taunting me, I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it. I was really scared. Well, Tatiana says in order to cope with her father's constant abuse, she tried to convince herself that they were in love, this was normal, there was some way to, to just live with this as though it was okay. Uh, knowing deep down inside it wasn't okay, but she would try in her mind to accommodate, to adapt to it in some way. Where was your mother when all this was going on? My mom worked a lot, and as she still does. She's a worker, and... Um... I mean, she was gone most of the time. And she worked, what was her job? She used to house sit, um, dog sit. In the beginning, she was doing odd jobs. And then she was a caregiver. She turned her profession into being a caregiver, and she was gone. So she would, she would take care of, of those that were bedridden, and mm -hmm. she would be gone sometimes... 24-7, days at yeah, a time, right? 24-7, yeah, at one point. But did she have no idea this was going on? No, sir, and everybody asked me, you know, even if she were to have asked me, I would have said, no, that's not going on. You know, I, um, my mom was abused by him as well, and, you know, she, I don't know, sir. I get what everybody says, she should have seen something, but it's hard, you know, when you're in the situation yourself. Right. No, I, I, I get it. And he abused her. Correct. And he abused you. You had three children with him. Mm -hmm. So they grow up in this house and they got to an age, they got to the age where he started abusing you. Correct. Did he hurt them? He did hurt them um, physically one time. I remember several times just, you know, kind of spanking and stuff like that. Do you know if he ever sexually assaulted any of the three? Um, I've heard 
from my daughter that he had tried to sexually assault her um, when she was seven years old. What did you think when she told you that? I was even more disgusted by him. I was... What did you say to her? I told her I was really sorry that I did not remember. It was one incident that she said that I got him in the room with her, but I was, I had blacked out. I didn't even know this had happened till years later and that I attacked him. So alcohol, drugs to control you, mm -hmm. and this included um, crack, mm -hmm. meth. Mm -hmm. He'd do anything he could to alter your consciousness, right? That's correct. And keep you in the zone. Um, looking back, how young were you when he first gave you crack? About 14 years old. Meth. In the same 14. Yeah. How do you feel seeing that? I've never seen that footage before. Is it good to see him shackled? I'm in shock right now. Closed captioning provided by... People gonna talk in D.C. They're claiming the Samuels are looking to divorce. Him and his dad are not speaking. Wait, 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 wait. Welcome. We're going to be out on our own little island for peace. I'm going to go before I whip your ass. Her sisterhood just went out the window. I'm back. Then all of them. Because I was talking again and again and again. Love and Marriage DC returns Saturday, January 21st at 8, 7 central. Starting Friday. You gotta get with it or get lost. Ready to Love returns with new episodes, followed by the new series, All the Single Ladies. You ladies have decided? I am a prize. Friday at 8, 7 Central. Part of Real Drama Weekends on OWN. He fooled everybody. Please don't let him have hurt somebody. What did you do first? A mother. Why? Because I wanted her here. Eva Lives Here, all new season, Sunday, January 22nd at 9, followed by Signs of a Psychopath, all new season on ID. Sunday. I wish he didn't feel this way. I think Usman played my mom. Can we talk about the elephant in the room? What is the elephant in the room? Happily Ever After Tell All. No limits. All new. Sunday at 8 on TLC. Something about the Playboy brand had a little bit more of a mystique to it. It's a ticket to the highlight. Love can you prepare you for The Playboy Murders, all new series, Monday, January 23rd at 10 on ID. Let the chips fall where they may. Tension's gonna fly. Everybody's dating each other, but everybody knows they're dating each other. Their directness yeah. is getting out of hand. Yeah. When I saw that, I was like, oh, well. If you're looking for a man, say amen. Amen. There are some things that I've heard. It's so embarrassing. Okay, sweetheart. Next. I think he's a fraud, and I don't think he's a good person. It's only going to get worse. I ain't going to do this with everybody. This is so much. Ready to love. New episode, Friday, 8, 7 Central. <laughs> I've decided to go to rehab. I'm still here, bitches. We got a big surprise. Gage is going to be a big brother. Thousand Pound Sisters, season premiere, Tuesday at 9 on TLC. All these young, untimely deaths. For your kid, fame can be poisonous. He shared with me something. Oh, I hesitate to even say it. The Price of Glee, three-part limited series, Monday at 9 on ID. I can't believe we're cleaning LeBron's house. Hey there. Go! He got a hologram of himself just to give him compliments. You handled the decision to go to Miami perfectly. Nah. Tomorrow. How about we throw the party here? In the King's house. Or you not at the team? The only thing better than the game. You got it, bro. Is the after party. You good? We got a big problem. <laughs> Was it the Miami ring? Because y'all know he didn't deserve that. House party. Rated R. Tomorrow. Come on, open book. Okay, open book. The three-part reunion concludes. She is the definition of the devil. You have a dark soul. Oh. Damn, Tisha. Damn. You don't want to miss. Oh, you talking about when you hacked this phone? What the f***? Oh, I'm going to get past it. You are changing so many lives. This. I'm very concerned about you. Love and Marriage Huntsville, new reunion part three, Saturday at 8, 7 central.
Tatiana finally escaped her 19 years of abuse after her father was arrested, but she nearly died in the process. One day my father was extremely high on methamphetamines after days of not eating, sleeping, and thought I was trying to kill him. That's when he tried to kill me. He became paranoid and he thought that I was sticking a needle in his lung. I said, if you're really feeling that you're going to die, let's just go to the hospital. He had a knife in his hand. I convinced him and he started driving me to the hospital. We got to the hospital and he circled around several times. I was telling him, kids are there by themselves. Five Rottweilers in a little hotel room. I tried to jump out the car and I wasn't fast enough and he stabbed me twice in the chest, but I was still able to get out and run. I don't remember ever looking back. I just ran. He did come after me. I went right in for surgery. The knife wound was so deep, it was one centimeter from the sack of my heart. I told them, my boyfriend did this. I don't want him to go back and get my children. They said, okay, okay. So when I woke up from my surgery, I told the authorities, those children are my father's children. I don't want to go back to him. When they said that he was in custody, you can only imagine the relief I got from that news. It's something I thought I would never experience. It was a rebirth. I call that my born again day because I almost died. Not only I almost died, I was free. How do you feel seeing that? Oh my God, I've never seen that footage before. I'm in shock right now. Wow. What do you, what do you think as you look at that? <sighs> I am just... I have no words for it right now. That's... Is it good to see him shackled? It's good to see him shackled. It's very good to see him shackled. But it's also, it's sad. But how can a father do this, you know, to somebody? Like, I still, I just wish every day that he didn't have to do that. You know, that he could just be a dad and... I missed out on it. My girls missed out on it. You feel cheated out of what you didn't have and as well kids. as what did happen to you. Exactly, everything. My whole life, I feel, has been a cheat. And if it wasn't for my children, I would not be here right now, Dr. Phil. I wouldn't. I would have ended my life a long time ago. Are you glad that you have survived? I am super glad that I've survived, yes. But I know I have a whole lot more surviving to do what if I told you that some things were going to happen today that were going to change your life? Well, I think good things or bad things. <laughs> it all depends. Sorry. No, I would expect you to check all the boxes off all, all the right, possibilities, right. given who you are. Good things. Good. I would be super happy. Well, Tatiana's father uh, chose to represent himself in court and to this day has never admitted he did anything wrong. So where do you go from here? What does she do? He's in prison. She's not. Is she free? Or is he still controlling her? We'll talk about that when we come back. I would describe Lindolfo Tibbies as an evil sociopath narcissist. This had to be the most extreme case of sexual abuse that I've ever investigated. Talking with Lindolfo was like looking at the devil. The hair on the back of my neck stood up. Closed captioning provided by... Coming January 21st, the Samuels are looking to, uh, the D word, divorce, separate, something did, like did that. Did they say divorce or separate? What? We just had a whole show prep with our producer and no one told me we were going to bring us up live on the air today. She says that her and her husband are trying to fix their marriage and denying any divorce rumors. All marriages go through stuff. Does that mean we separate or getting divorced? Absolutely not. Love and Marriage DC. New episodes, Saturday, January 21st at 8, 7 central. Starting Friday. 
you gotta get with it or get lost. Ready to Love returns with new episodes, followed by the new series, All the Single Ladies. You ladies have decided? I am a prize. Friday at 8, 7 Central. Part of Real Drama Weekends on OWN. LeBron's on vacation. How about we throw the party here? We gonna invite all the celebrities. Have you seen how out of control this party is? He eating an apple in the party. That's the sign of a madman right there. House Party, rated R. This is Mary Ann's first time visiting Paris. Madame, where are you? Before Mary Ann packed her bags, before she attempted her first sentence in French, before she completed her first 15 minute lesson, yes. she downloaded Babbel. Babbel helped unlock her lifelong dream of learning French. She started speaking in just three weeks. So when it came time to tell the cab driver to take her to the Hotel Pierre... J'aimerais aller à l'Hotel Pierre. Oh, c'est très bien. J'espère que votre voyage est bien passé. 150 language experts and educators designed Babbel to be the most efficient and effective way to learn a new language. Babbel focuses on natural conversation. You'll remember what you learn, and you can speak and pronounce with confidence. Start speaking a new language in three weeks. Try it for free at Babbel.com. Let the chips fall where they may. Tension's gonna fly. Everybody's dating each other, but everybody knows they're dating each other. Your directness is getting out of hand. Yeah. When I saw that, I was like, oh, well. If you're looking for a man, say amen. Amen. There are some things that I've heard. It's so embarrassing. Okay, sweetheart. Next. I think he's a fraud, and I don't think he's a good person. It's only going to get worse. I ain't going to do this with everybody. This is too much. Ready to love. New episode, Friday, 8, 7 Central. Come on, open book. Okay, open book. The three-part reunion concludes. She is the definition of the devil. You have a dark soul. Oh. Damn, Tisha. Damn. You don't want to miss. Oh, you talking about when you hacked this phone? What the f***? Oh, I'm going to get past it. You are changing so many lives. This. I'm very concerned about you. Love and Marriage Huntsville, new reunion, part three. Saturday at 8, 7 Central. Do you want your man or not? Do you know your plans or not? You gonna go back home or not? You gonna claim your throne or not? Is you Khaleesi or that other name I don't remember? At my dad's trial, I testified. It was horrible. I hated it because I had not spoken with him since he stabbed me. During the trial, having to hear his voice, it was nerve-wracking. And then to top it off, he was representing himself, and it was like he was having a conversation with me. It was really disgusting. I remember that he asked, so you're going to tell me you did not have a good childhood, a good upbringing? And that pissed me off. He said, you know, you had the opportunity, per se, to speak out about what happened, and you never did. In a unanimous decision, unanimous decision, a jury found Tatiana's father, uh, Lindolfo Tevez, guilty of forcible rape, sodomy, and inflicting great bodily harm on Tatiana. <laughs> the key evidence DNA test that confirmed that he was the biological sperm donor of Tassiana's children. Take a look. Lindolfo Tibbies is the most pure evil man I've ever met in my life. I would describe Lindolfo Tibbies as an evil sociopath narcissist. I was the lead detective on the sexual assault case involving Tatiana. I've investigated approximately in excess of 3,000 sexual assault cases. This had to be the most extreme case of sexual abuse that I've ever investigated. After you know, taking the initial report, collected DNA evidence from her and from the three children, then had to get a sample from Lindolfo, who was still in custody from the attempt murder. The entire time I was obtaining his DNA sample and telling him the reason for the investigation, he adamantly denied ever abusing uh, her sexually with narcotics or alcohol. The DNA was clear evidence that uh, he was in fact the father. In 2009, during the trial, 
Lindolfo. He decided to represent himself. During the cross-examination when Tatiana was on the stand, Lindolfo accused her several times of actually wanting to engage in sex and making it up to ruin his life. Talking with Lindolfo was like looking at the devil. He looked right through me, rage and hatred coming from his eyes. The hair on the back of my neck stood up. As Lindolfo told me that uh, he was going to kill me and kill her as soon as he got out because we were ruining his life. He is absolutely one of the most heinous individuals I've ever had to deal with. Well, joining us now is Rick Carr. Rick was the lead investigator on Tatiana's case, so thank you so much for being here. Thank you for having me. This, um, <laughs> you spent the time investigating this, questioning him, and it sent chills down your spine. You're probably the only other person on the planet that can imagine what she went through because you dealt with this guy. It had to just be horrific. It was unbelievable. And the one thing that uh, always stuck out in my mind was just how courageous she was from the first moment I met her till the sentencing. She was unbelievably brave, uh, just as she's being here today. And I, uh, of you know, 30 years of police work, uh, the most courageous victim I've ever met. Yeah. Now, when, um, um, I agree with that. And this guy was incredibly narcissistic. Right up to the DNA, he denied any involvement doing anything at all, right? Entirely, yes. Once it was proven through DNA evidence that he, in fact, had uh, molested her, assaulted her, raped her. Then he started to just blame her. She wanted this. She wanted it. She basically sexually assaulted him. Yeah. Now, he turned down a plea deal, right? What was the story on this? Uh, the, I believe the initial offer from the district attorney's office was a 30-year uh, sentence, which he turned down. Why do you think he turned that down? I think it comes back to what you said, being the ultimate narcissist, and now we could make another show about him where he gets to abuse her even more during the testimony. He traded 79 years in prison to harass you one more time. I know. I did not know this. This is first that I hear. I never yeah. knew this. He had a deal for 30 years. Instead, he got 109 just so he could harass you one more time. I can't tell you how much we appreciate mm -hmm. you being here today and your sponsorship of her and your commitment to this case. It's, it's my uh, pleasure. Thank you, Dr. Phil. It's, it's why I bleed blue, my friend. <laughs> I appreciate what. that. Uh, <laughs> next, Tatiana says two of her three children know that her father is their father. She really wants to know how to tell the youngest if she should, she said, what do I do about that? I'm going to answer that question after the break. People going to talk in D.C. They're claiming the Samuels are looking to divorce. Him and his dad are not speaking. Welcome. We need to be out on our own little island for peace. I'm gonna go before I whip your ass. Her sisterhood just went out the window. I'm back. Then all of them. Because I don't talk and again and again and again. Love and Marriage DC returns Saturday, January 21st at 8, 7 Central. Sunday. I wish he didn't feel this way. I think Usman played my mom. Can we talk about the elephant in the room? What is the elephant in the room? Happily Ever After Tell All. No Limits. All new. Sunday at 8 on TLC. Let the chips fall where they may. Tension's gonna fly. Everybody's dating each other, but everybody knows they're dating each other. Your directness yeah. is getting out of hand. Yeah. When I saw that, I was like, oh, well. If you're looking for a man, say amen. 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 
there are some things that I heard. It's so embarrassing. Case we are next. I think he's a fraud, and I don't think he's a good person. It's only gonna get worse. I ain't gonna do this with everybody. This is so much. Ready to love. New episode Friday, 8, 7 Central. Come on, open book. Okay, open book. The three-part reunion concludes. She is the definition of the devil. You have a dark soul. Oh. Damn, Tisha. Damn. You don't want to miss. Oh, you talking about when you hacked his phone? What the f***? Oh, I'm going to get past it. You are changing so many lives. This. I'm very concerned about you. Love and Marriage Huntsville, new reunion part three, Saturday at 8, 7 Central. I've decided to go to rehab. I'm still here, bitches. We got a big surprise. Gage is going to be a big brother. Thousand Pound Sisters, season premiere, Tuesday at 9 on TLC. Starting Friday, you got to get with it or get lost. Ready to Love returns with new episodes, followed by the new series, All the Single Ladies. You ladies have decided? I am a prize. Friday at 8, 7 Central, part of Real Drama Weekends on Home. I can't believe we're cleaning LeBron's house. Hey there. Go! He got a hologram of himself just to give him compliments. You handled the decision to go to Miami perfectly. Nah. Tomorrow. How about we throw a party here? In the King's house. Are you not entertained? The only thing better than the game. You got it, bro. Is the after party. You good? We got a big problem. <laughs> Was it the Miami ring? Because y'all know he didn't deserve that. House party. Rated R. Tomorrow. Do you want your man or not? Do you know your plans or not? You gonna go back home or not? You gonna claim your throne or not? Is you Khaleesi or that other <laughs> name I don't remember? He fooled everybody. Please don't let him have hurt somebody. What did you do first? Her mother. Why? Because I wanted her here. Evil lives here. All new season. Sunday, January 22nd at 9. Followed by Signs of a Psychopath. All new season on ID. In the past, I've dated um, men that hit me, push me, verbally abuse me. I take so much abuse from other men because, in my mind, no abuse will ever amount to the abuse that I've already been through. By somebody treating me wrong, it's or even hitting me, it's, it's not going to compare. And I've been told my current significant other right now, the only way you could ever really hurt me would be if you cut a limb or you or you kill me because my father's done it all well after being held prisoner and physically and sexually abused for 19 years every day by her father tashiana says it's still a struggle i want to talk about two things mm -hmm. your youngest doesn't know right correct the question becomes, do you want her to find out from you or from the internet? Me. You definitely want her in a controlled and loving environment when, right. when you tell her this. And when you do tell her, you want to be sure that you're prepared to bust some myths. Mm -hmm. And you know, we'll help you with some talking points here that, that you can use when you talk to her, but you want to bust some myths because people think, you know, if there's an incestuous relationship, then, you know, there are problems with intellectual development and health issues. And, you know, there is a, a higher risk for certain complications, but that's not a given, as you've seen with your other daughters. Mm -hmm. I mean, you have wonderful daughters and they're yes. bright and thriving and mm -hmm. all of that. So you need you need to dispel some myths so she doesn't understand, doesn't have a misunderstanding of, of what she's uh, in for. And, and you're going to want to tell her that um, in every dark cloud, there's a silver lining. And, and for you, she is that silver lining. Mm -hmm. There's certainly nothing for her to be ashamed of. Right. And there's nothing for you to be ashamed of. Um, you two were victimized in this, but uh, there are some there are some talking points that you can have when you talk to her. But I think you should do that in a way that uh, is 
surrounded by love and if, if the other two sisters can be there and, and you guys can just do this in a matter of unity where she has an opportunity to wrap her head around it and right. we'll give you some talking points in detail about how best to do that. But she's old enough to do it. This is the time to do it. The time to do it was not when she was seven or eight. Right. And it's not five years from now. The time is now. now. And we'll help mm -hmm. you to do that. Thank you. Um, you know, I asked Tashiana a few minutes ago, I said, what if today is a day that can really change her life for the better? Uh, she called me on that. <laughs> I do have a plan. I'm going to tell her what it is when we come back. Closed captioning provided by... I can't believe we're cleaning LeBron's house. How about we throw a party here? This is a really bad idea. He got a hologram of himself. You handled the decision to go to Miami perfectly. Nah. House party. Rated R. All these young, untimely deaths. For your kid, fame can be poisonous. He shared with me something. Oh, I hesitate to even say it. The Price of Glee, three-part limited series. Monday at 9 on ID. Something about the Playboy brand had a little bit more of a mystique to it. It's a ticket to the highlight. What can we prepare you for? The Playboy Murders, all new series, Monday, January 23rd at 10 on ID. Coming January 21st. The Samuels are looking to, uh, the D word, divorce, separate, something the, like did that. Did they say divorce or separate? <laughs> what? We just had a whole show prep with our producer, and no one told me we were going to bring us up live on the air today. She says that her and her husband are trying to fix their marriage and denying any divorce rumors. All marriages go through stuff. Does that mean we separate or get divorced? Absolutely not. Love and Marriage DC. New episodes, Saturday, January 21st at 8, 7 central. Sunday. I wish he didn't feel this way. I think it was been played my mom. Can we talk about the elephant in the room? What is the elephant in the room? Happily Ever After Tell All. No limits. All new. Sunday at 8 on TLC. I think it's my time to find love. I, I want to date younger men. I'm as sexual as I was in my teens. Turn it up. Where's all the men at? Here we go. It just got real. Turn it up now. Come on, open book. Okay, open book. The three-part reunion concludes. She is the definition of the devil. You have a dark soul. Oh. Damn, Tisha. Damn. You don't want to miss. Oh, you talking about when you hacked this phone? What the f***? Oh, I'm going to get past it. You are changing so many lives. This. I'm very concerned about you. Love and Marriage Huntsville, new reunion part three, Saturday at 8, 7 central. She's immune. Robust. They're working on a cure. You get her there. And you said everything right. There's always something bad out there. Infected. Raiders. Clickers. After all we've been through, we just know how to play with this. We have a job to do. We finish what we started. <laughs> Let the chips fall where they may. Tension's gonna fly. Everybody's dating each other, but everybody knows they're dating each other. Their directness yeah. is getting out of hand. Yeah. When I saw that, I was like, oh, well. If you're looking for a man, say amen. Amen. There are some things that I've heard. It's so embarrassing. Okay, sweetheart. Next. I think he's a fraud, and I don't think he's a good person. It's only gonna get worse. I ain't gonna do this with everybody. This is so much. Ready to love. New episode, Friday, 8, 7 Central. Tatiana, I said, are you, um, are you really free of him? You really aren't. Mm -mm. You're really not. Because you, you have, in a sense, still given some of your power away. And he is able for you to feel in any way like you're damaged goods, like you're second class. That means you have a damaged personal truth. And, mm -hmm. and the problem with that is we generate the results in life we think we deserve. I see open wounds in you that aren't healed yet. People ask me sometimes where I learn things I learn and get counsel. I read a book one time that's the most powerful book I've ever read. 
and it's Man's Search for Meaning by Viktor Frankl. Mm -hmm. And Viktor Frankl is a Jewish psychiatrist that was a prisoner of war, and he wrote about those experiences, and he said, they controlled whether I lived or died every day. They controlled whether I sat or stood, whether I ate or starved. They controlled every aspect of my life but one. They couldn't control the attitude I took about it. Mm -hmm. They couldn't control my spirit. They couldn't control my mind. And what attitude I took about it was, I'm going to survive because I must create meaning to this suffering. And that's why the title of the book is Man's Search for Meaning. Your job is to find the meaning. Why did this happen to you? How can you use this in the world? You're using your life right now because there are women right now that are trapped in situations, probably not as egregious as yours, but trapped in situations that will say, I do need to reach out. I do need to tell someone. You are saving thousands of women's lives as you sit there in this chair right now. I hope so. I sure hope so, Dr. Phil. I do. Thank you. But you cannot give away what you don't have. You have to take care of yourself first. I, I want to introduce you to somebody that's on Polycom. He's a dear, dear friend of mine. His name is Miles Adcox, and he is the owner and CEO of an organization called Onsite. Mm -hmm. Now, Onsite is a place that does intensive workshops for people that have been through trauma to help them with self-worth and self-esteem and, and mental health issues. And it's the most beautiful campus you've ever seen in your life. And the only problem with it is people don't want to leave once they get there. <laughs> and Miles is, is the creator and he runs this organization. Miles, how are you doing today? I'm doing really well. Honored to be here, Dr. Phil. Well, thank you for joining us. You've been listening to our conversation the whole way. Can you help us with this precious woman? Not only can I, Tatiana, I'm honored to, honestly. I am fortunate I get to represent some of the brightest trauma practitioners in the country at my place, but I need to tell you, they're sophisticated clinicians, but they're humans first. And we obsess about curating safety, emotional safety and psychological safety here. And I, I don't know that I've ever met a human more deserving of having that feeling, maybe for the first time, to be seen, to be heard, to be valued, to be loved, to be respected, and unpack a lot of that baggage you've been carrying too long that's not yours. I can't wait to welcome you here. Thank you. Thank you. We're offering this to you, and, you, and I want you to take that help. Will you take that help? I will definitely do so. Thank you so much. All right, good. All right. Now, I, I also want to add my dear friend who's going to work with on site because when you get out of there, this is Coach Mike Bear right here. Um, and Coach Mike Bear is a life coach. He is really experienced and beloved by his clients. He works with A-list celebrities, everyday people, and he focuses on helping clients break patterns in their lives and in a real action-oriented way. And what we want to do is get you a life coach that is elbow-to-elbow, shoulder-to-shoulder with you to say, I'm going to change my walk in this world. We're going to make different choices. Maybe it's different career, different whatever it is, but you're going to have a personal life coach that walks you every step of the way and starts putting your life together the way you deserve for it to be. And Mike, tell her what we're talking about here. Is you deserve to have the biggest, best life possible. Mm -hmm. And so what we're going to do is we're going to look at all the things you were lacking, education, mm. uh, parenting classes so you don't recreate anything amongst your kids, intimacy courses, and we'll, we'll develop and devise a plan so that you get the life that you truly deserve. Thank you so much. You know, Mike is, he's not a life coach, he's the life coach. He has a new book called Best Self, Be You Only Better, mm. and that book was written for you. Fair enough? Fair enough, sir. Okay, Thank you. we have a deal. All right. I want to thank all of my guests today. 
A very special thanks to Rick Carr and Coach Mike Bear and Miles. Thank you for changing your schedule and joining us today from on site. Uh, all the rest of you, we'll see you next time. Thanks so much.